They cheated Medicare, secretly videotaped women, even had sex with patients, and many are still licensed to practice medicine in Ohio. Tonight, an exclusive Five on Your Side investigation into why even convicted felons could be treating you and your family. On Your Side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joins us now with what he has uncovered. Ron. Well, John, the vast majority of doctors are trustworthy and professional. But our investigation found Ohio law allows some doctors to continue to see patients despite serious allegations, even felony convictions. Totally unprepared to hear those things coming from that side of the room from that physician, my doctor. Like most, she trusted her doctor. But a Five on Your Side review of disciplinary records found doctors having sex with patients, another secretly videotaping women, even one diagnosed with a psychosexual disorder. Yet many continue to see patients. Rusty Harden remembers one day in the fall of 2008, alone with her doctor in an exam room. He didn't let go. So I became uncomfortable as I had to push him away. She's talking about Dr. Shafiq Ahmad. He wanted to hug you. Yes, and he did hug me, but it wasn't it wasn't a um, professional style of hug. He was it was a full body embrace. And she's not the first to complain to I state regulators. Joseph Tan won this lawsuit against Dr. Ahmad when his client sued for sexual misconduct. That trust was clearly violated when she was kissed in the mouth. Uh, trust was clearly violated when the doctor uh, engaged in actions that went beyond providing the service that my client uh, went to him for. And at the Medical Board of Ohio, we found a file full of similar complaints. Beginning in 2001, Dr. Ahmad was accused of pressing his pelvic area against a woman's thigh. Another complaint, he groped her breasts. Still another said he was kissing her and trying to stick his tongue in her mouth. In fact, board records show complaints piled up for eight full years, 13 victims. But to answer your question, no, the complaints did not give rise to any action by the medical board with respect to Dr. Ahmad. Rusty Harden says she was victim number 11. But he moved on to tell me how beautiful I was and that he was in love with me. And He's in love with you. I love you. And despite complaints, Dr. Ahmad continued to practice. Then, in 2009, allegations moved beyond sexual misconduct. Dr. Ahmad was accused of hiring a hitman to kill his wife. Nothing happened. Nothing until happened. After he was arrested. Until after he was arrested. And not even immediately when he was arrested. In fact, the medical board failed to act until four full months after Dr. Ahmad's 2009 arrest. It offered him a hearing. Richard Whitehouse is the medical board's executive director. Some women, though, would argue that more rights are being given to a doctor who's abusing them than to them. No, I, I, I just, I don't minimize at all uh, victims of, of sexual abuse. How well did it represent you? The board did not represent me. The board did not represent any of those women. Hearings on sexual misconduct were never held. We're governed by the laws of Ohio, and we are, are limited in that which we can do. An allegation is not enough for us to take an action on based upon someone's license. The worst thing we could do is, is hurry up to the finish to proceed without evidence. But there was plenty of evidence against Dr. Mark Blankenberg. He's a pediatrician found with 2,500 pages of child porn on his home computer in the fall of 2007. Dr. Blankenberg and his twin brother, also a pediatrician, were convicted of pandering sexually oriented material involving minors and drug charges. Both were sent to prison in 2010. It's hard for me to believe that investigators armed with 2,500 pornographic images on a pediatrician's computer in 2007 right. would not have immediately 
picked up the phone. Here's here's the difference. Call the medical board. I mean, don't you think they do that? Well, and, and again, if, if the question is when we were contacted, I mean, we can find out when that was. Detectives who investigated told us the medical board was part of the investigation from the very beginning and knew what was found. And we found something else that surprised us. The board is not required to revoke my license if I'm convicted of a felony. No. Well, that's right. Under Ohio law, doctors can continue to practice even if convicted of a felony. For example, our investigation found doctors convicted of ripping off Medicare to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they're still practicing medicine in Ohio. And John, tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a lot more on exactly how the Medical Board of Ohio disciplines doctors who go bad. And of course, right now, you can go to Newsnet5.com to see much more details on our report. And you can join the conversation on Twitter at hashtag WoosDocs. Unbelievable, eye-opening information. Thank you very much, Ron. You're welcome. Well, now to